Okay, so hello and welcome back to another Unity tutorial. In this one we're going to be finishing off the item system tutorial series. Don't get me wrong there, that doesn't mean this is the last video, you know, using this system. What I've decided to do, though, is end this series here and then start another series called maybe RPG mechanics, like role-playing game mechanics, which we will start off with what we've got here. I kind of want to split it up into a separate playlist because it's going to be different. So some people might just want like an inventory and hotbar thing, which is what I've already made. So this video I'm just going to be finishing off some things, maybe writing some more classes just for like different kinds of items. Just, you know, nothing, nothing too difficult this video. And then the next video we'll be starting a new series, as I said. I'll make a new GitHub repo for this, but I will... Um, start it off with all the code in this one so that I ha you can if you just want the item system then you can you know get the one that I've been showing in my last few videos or if you want the new one which I'm going to continue developing then you can go for that one so the kind of things we're going to implement in the RPG series would be like vendors which is what people want uh, abilities spells you know how do you unlock them you know level up get more points and put them in and so on um, saving and loading stuff like that Maybe, well, the, with the whole um, walking around, interacting with chests to loot items. We've already got the inventory, but we have no good way to actually loot it. And what I could have done in this series is made it so, like, we've got a character and we can go around and loot things. But I thought, well, that's more suited for its own, like, actual kind of series. So I hope you guys are okay with what I'm planning to do with this. So obviously, yeah, don't worry, this isn't actually the last video. It wasn't clickbait, it was just kind of like... Um, you know, I do want to separate it out so that we don't just have like a 30 part item system tutorial series when we start doing like quests or something. I want like all that stuff to be separate. So yeah, we can do quests, that'd be pretty fun. Um, NPCs with like their different things, so like you can have crafting, so we can do like recipes and stuff as well. Uh, I think it'd be pretty fun. If you do like, you know, those ideas, then feel free to uh, say so below and give other ideas of what to cover. Um, just watch out for the next playlist. It'll say part one, but I'll explain as well in that video that um, I'll be starting with this series, this system, and if some people come along and they don't want to follow the item system, they just want to start with the RPG stuff I'm doing, then they can always just pull the GitHub repo and just, like, start where I am if they want to. So, yeah, um, that's what we're going to be doing. Uh, but before we get into anything, I'd like to thank my patrons, with special thanks to Flow State Games, Average Morning, Thomas Huster, Remy Baldwin, and Phil Baum. If anyone else is able to help support the channel monetarily, the link to my Patreon is down below. If you can't help monetarily, then it would uh, be greatly appreciated if you could help by following me on Twitch, uh, Twitter, any social media, I've got it all linked below. Um, that would mean a lot. Okay, let's get into the video. Yeah, so this video isn't going to be very long, it's just going to be some cleanup and some almost like set up for the um, RPG series, I guess. So what, what kind of things are we going to want? Well, obviously the hotbar is always active and we can currently put stuff on the hotbar, move it around. In the RPG system, uh, series, whatever, we're going to make it so that you can obviously like press keys like 1 to 9 or 1 to 9 to 0 to activate what's in these slots if there is something in the slots. And then the inventory, um, maybe you'll right click on an item and you'll get a little pop-up thing saying like use, drop, this, that, the other. I, I might not do that part, but... The point is like, if you put on your hotbar and you press the key, you use it. If you drag it out, you drop it or destroy it like I've shown. Um, it's up to you. What we're gonna do now, I guess, we wanna make it so we can toggle the inventory open or close. We don't really need um, like an actual physical player to do that. We want the inventory closed and if we press, for example, B for bags or I for inventory, we can you know, do that. Now, rather than writing like a specific script to do that for every single type of UI that opens and closes. I'm just going to write a generic script. So maybe I'll make a folder for like utilities. And inside there we'll make a script called um, toggle active with key press. Very specific, but the point is I can reuse that on many different things. So if I just go and put the namespace uh, for, was it? Yeah, dappadino dot and then we need you, if it lets me, utilities. And then we can go put that in there. The Visual Studio would catch up. And then what we want to do with this is we want to have the designer choose the key to press, the serialized field private key code. Let's call it key code equals uh, key code dot none as a default and then all we want to say is on the update if input dot get key down and then the key code that they chose 
So if that key is pressed, then we want to toggle the game object. But the way I've designed it, and I think the better way to do this, isn't just setting itself inactive. Because if we disable ourselves, then what's going to happen is this update won't be called and we can't re-enable ourselves. So generally what you'd do is the UI element you want to toggle would be a child of the parent object with this on. So we also want to have reference to a game object. Um, like object to toggle maybe. And we want to say, you know, object to toggle dot set active. And we want to set it active to the opposite of what it currently is. So we'll say object to toggle dot active uh, in hierarchy, is it? Mm -hmm. The local active state of this game object. Yeah. Pretty sure that's the right one to go for. There's, there's different ones you can do. So we'll just remove those using statements we don't need. Uh, if I remember correctly, this this is fine. Like I don't think there's anything else we need to do here. So what we can try, we can test it, and go put it on this inventory. So we go to the inventory root and put this on it, and say, for example, I mean later on I might build my own input system with like you know the player can change what keys do what. But for now we're just going to say the inventory is opened by the key i, and the game object is the child, which is canvas inventory. And then we can say canvas inventory, set it inactive or deactive or whatever. Uh, apply. Yep, save. All right, if we press play now, and I press I, it won't open because I remember now. You meant to put an exclamation mark in front of whether it's active, because then it's a toggle, right? You want to do what it what it isn't currently. Okay, that's my bad. And now if I press I, open, close, open, close, open, close. So maybe you want it to be a different key. I actually prefer B for bag. That's just me personally. But as I said, I'm going to end up doing it so that the uh, player can change that in their own input system, but that would be its own video entirely. It's going to be a lot of videos, but it'll be teaching a lot of um, a lot of mechanics for RPGs. And RPGs are you know, quite a popular genre to make. Not necessarily multiplayer online ones. I don't have a clue where to start there. But you know, single player, first person, or third person, I guess, RPGs. Um, be pretty fun. Alright, now personally one thing I did in my own game which I think is pretty cool is a lot of different parts of the UI um, will have like close buttons and you don't want to have to make the close button multiple times. So what a good thing you can do is you can go uh, and make the close button. So if I go into Canvas Inventory and we make the close button on here and we make the close button a prefab and we can put it on anything. So this uh, background inventory has the slots holder and that's pretty much it, right? That's uh, to hold the slots, and we have the background here. So I'd say on the background we want a um, new UI. Should we go for button? I'd say button. Now this button, we'll call it, you know, button underscore close. So this is a close button. We'll set it to be square, so maybe 75 by 75. Mm, looks a bit big. 50 by 50. The actual text is going to be uh, just a big X maybe for like close. The text could be just, you know, as big as it can go in the box, I guess. And usually when you have a close thing like this, I'd say the background is usually red. Maybe not like that red, but it's, it's red. And then the actual text can be white like that. So there's our close button. I don't know if you guys like the design. You can design it how you want. The point is, um, uh, I'll just put text on to X, why not? Uh, oh, what, what, why do we have that? Hmm. Oh well. What we want to do now is we want to dock this. So we're going to say dock it to the background's top right, zero, zero. Okay. Now this is when you probably want to, you know, resize it or reshape it or something. So maybe 75, 75 is good. It, it looks huge there. <laughs> 60 by 60. Whatever makes you happy. I'll leave it there. Um, so now I want to make this a prefab of its own. So if I go to prefabs, this button close can just be a prefab. So I can reuse it whenever I want. I uh, still don't get why that's there, uh, but apply. That's fine. And now, with this button close, obviously we want to say, you know, 
go to canvas inventory. If we press the close button, we want to set the game object set active false. So that's good. That's that's what we want. We can't actually apply that to the prefab. I mean, it says we can, but obviously, if we um, were to go back to, I really don't get why that keeps happening. If if we were to go back to the prefab, that wouldn't be there because not every single object in the game has a you know canvas inventory. But that's uh, here now on the inventory. And if we, for example, we're not going to do this, but if we wanted to close the hotbar, which isn't really you don't do that. We could drag the button close onto the hotbar thing with the background here. Now, obviously, what it tries to do is it tries to put it on there, so we wouldn't be able to put it there on the background because it would just treat it as a slot. Uh, if we put slot in inventory on here, nah, it's not going to let us. We'll just need another panel like the inventory, and it would we'd just be able to drag it on, and it would work. We'd obviously have to hook up the button on click, but what we can do with that now is we can obviously save that with it disabled and if we press I oh sorry B I changed the key we can now press the close button and it closes my only problem is the text components going really weird I've literally never seen that happen before uh, what is going on here <laughs> I'm guessing that's a bug because that doesn't normally happen Ooh, what's going on in there? I'll get an error, yay. Luckily, that doesn't actually matter that much. Um, I don't have a clue. Every time I press apply, it just uh, brings back this sub mesh. If, if it's just there once and I save and press play, and then press B, and the close button's there. It's all good. So it's, it's nothing to worry about. If we also go to the button and to go to the actual thing here and tell it to navigate none, because then it doesn't do the weird selected thing. And that's all good. And now, the only other thing uh, that I really want to do in this video is, well, we've got our items and we've got, like, consumable item. Maybe you want to also make some more. So you might want, like, um, ammunition, right? Maybe you'll go put it in a different folder, but it's no big deal. And really, what you want to do for ammunition is just open cons consumable item, copy it, paste, because it's pretty much it's the same type of item, like, it inherits from inventory item, it's got the create asset menu. You just want to uh, change whatever you want, right? So, so ammunition item, uh, new, what well, now? Nah, I'm just going to call it new ammunition, right? Maybe it's not even that, maybe it's just ammunition type, but new ammunition. We don't have something that happens when we use it, so we don't have to say the use text. We've just got the rarity, the max stack, the sell price. Um, and that's pretty much it. And then now whatever is unique to this ammunition is what you add. So for example, you might want to say what uh, weapon it's used for. I don't know, it's up to you. Do you want the ammunition to know what weapon it's for? Or do you want the weapons to know what ammunition it needs? It's that kind of like, you know, I I'd say um, the ammunition should just know what type of ammunition it is. Like you might want an enum for what type it is, or maybe you want it's a, your own scriptable object for what type it is. But um, so, for example, what you, what I'm trying to say here is, you could have arrow and flaming arrow and freezing arrow. They're all different ammunitions. Like you would create a new instance of a scriptable object, but it's still the same type of ammunition in the sense of uh, invent. You might say. Uh, that bows use arrows. But maybe you'll say bows use arrows and shurikens. You know, you probably don't want your bow to use a shuriken, but you could say that. So that's that's the kind of thing we're gonna go on to do. You know, we'll make like a bow, and then we'll make the bow. When you try and draw the bow, it'll check the inventory to say, hey, have we got, you know, valid ammunition for this weapon? If you have, start drawing it. And once the bow's drawn, when you release, it'll say, all right, get me like, the first thing you can find that is suitable for this weapon and it finds the fire arrow so it then instantiates the fire arrow prefab so for example ammunition would have a game object so it have a uh, serialized field private game object 
you know, ammunition prefab, right? And what would happen is you would write a getter, so you would have public game object ammunition prefab returns the ammunition prefab. And then what would happen is we would return that ammunition prefab to the bow and the bow would know what to instantiate to fire off. Um, that's the kind of thing you would do. So that like, um, <clears throat> obviously you might want to do more than that. You might want to then tell the arrow when you spawn it, hey, um, like may maybe you don't want a game object. Maybe you want like a specific reference to a class on a prefab. You know, it gets pretty complicated, but that's why I'm going to do each video, you know, one by one in the first video. We'll probably stick more item related at the start. I feel like the first video, though, should be what people have been asking for, which is like, you know, build like a quick character controller and be able to like interact with things. So we'll make like a chest and then uh, give the chest some items. And then when you interact with the chest, you know, you have a little pop up with those items and then you can press like loot all or you can click on the ones you want and it adds it to your inventory. That's the kind of thing we're going to do first. So I hope you look forward to that. I'm sure, sorry, there wasn't much in this video. It was just kind of like a recap and like saying what we're going to do next. Um, yeah, I hope you like what I've um, planned with the whole RPG thing. Uh, feel free to let me know below, you know, what you want me to cover, if you think it's a good idea and so on. Um, as always, you know, feel free to help me out on any social media you can. Uh, it'd mean a lot. Or Patreon if you're feeling that nice. Um, but yeah, so I'll be streaming tomorrow. Uh, next video will be on Monday where we start the RPG series. I'm looking forward to it. I hope you are. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.